So this is my review of Understanding Analysis by Stephen Abbott. Now, this book can pretty much be found anywhere um, on Amazon and even online. I've seen a bunch of PDFs and even on the actual Springer website, uh, I believe there's a PDF which you can download of the entire book. Now, looking at the contents of this book, you were first greeted by the preface, and I'll definitely recommend reading this section, uh, primarily because it talks about the audience who this book is intended for and also how to build a course from this book. So it talks about the audience, structure, and also this part's very important because it kind of shows you, okay, which chapters are necessary and which chapters are not really needed for future sections of the book. So looking at the table of contents here, we start off with the first chapter on the real numbers. And this is more of a preliminary chapter. So you'll go over things like different proof techniques, um, operations with sets, supremum and femum of bounded sets, uh, cardinality, and then I believe Cantor's theorem is just on, or mainly on Cantor's diagonal argument to prove that sets are uncountable. Now, even though this section does talk a little bit about proof techniques, um, I would definitely recommend that you have had taken a intensive like proof writing class, or you have read a book just solely focused on proofs before jumping into a book like this. So, a great book that I would recommend is one I've done a review on earlier on my channel, and that's The Book of Proof by Richard Amick. Now, from the second chapter onwards, it's where familiar concepts um, from single variable calculus appear, or begin to appear. So we start with sequences and series, and then we have basic topology of R, and if you read the preface, it kind of tells you that the only necessary chapters or necessary subsections you need to read are uh, besides the discussion, 3.2 and 3.3. So 3.4 and 3.5 perfect sets and connected sets, and Bayer's theorem are not really uh, talked about much throughout the book. And then chapter 4, we move on to limits and continuity, followed by the derivative, sequences and series, and then the Riemann integral. And the last chapter is just on additional topics. Now, in terms of how each chapter is organized, we start off with obviously the discussion here. So this is for chapter one. Discussion is relatively short for each chapter. Then we move on to the actual section itself. So this is 1.2. It goes on for a while and talks about examples, gives definitions and different theorems. And then we finally end off with the exercises. So it kind of depends on the chapter, but some chapters have a little bit of exercises. Some chapters have a lot of exercises. So for this chapter, we have 13, and then it moves on to the next section in the chapter. And then at the end of each chapter, you do have the epilogue, so this is for chapter one. And the main point of this, even though it's relatively short, like the discussion, it's to summarize mainly, obviously, what happened throughout the chapter, and sometimes also to talk about the consequences of different theorems brought up in that chapter. Now, overall, this book is very easy to read. And it's probably one of the easiest books to read on real analysis. So I would definitely recommend this to anyone who's studying real analysis for the very first time. Now, pretty much the only minor issue that I have with this book is that sometimes it introduces theorems or ideas uh, never talked about before. Um, and it refers to exercises to kind of justify why it is the way that it is. So for example, when it talks about here, this shows that G is Lipschitz and so is uniformly continuous on the closed interval from A to B. Why is that? Well, it refers to exercise 4.4.9. Now, to be honest, even though I've read the entire book, I haven't done every single practice problem. So you can kind of guess what point the author is trying to make. But if you haven't done the exercise itself, it's kind of going to make it hard for you to understand um, what's going on. Now, this isn't a very big like idea in the book, but the big theorems and big ideas are addressed by the author and proved in a very nice way and very understandable way so this is very like i said very minor issue that i have with the book now keep in mind that there aren't any answers in the back of the book but you can find pdf solutions online to pretty much like every single practice problem that is in this book so that's pretty much it for my review i'll leave a link to this book and thank you for watching